Okay. <coughs> Praise God. Amen. We started. And then thank God for, amen, for the, um, today's meeting. And <clears throat> praise God and for the testimonies, amen, that everyone is given. Praise God to those people who are listening <clears throat> on YouTube. It's just part of our little fellowship meeting where we have uh, listened to everyone's testimonies. And we're just going to um, listen to a, a message termed, praise God, how do we become pillars in God's house? Amen. And one thing we need in these last days is pillars because without pillars, the house is going to come tumbling down. I mean, when you look at like America now, Jesus said this, a house divided against itself shall not stand, it will fall down, which means the pillars. And, and there we, we see in the world, you know, you've got Republic Party, the Democrat Party trying to pull Trump down and Trump trying to pull this down and praise God and... and, and and if that's, if that's how you should behave in your house, well, how is it going to stand? It's not possible. Let me shut this door. <coughs> Praise God. Yeah. Shutting the door. Yeah. <coughs> how is the house going to stand? And that's what people don't realize. So to become a pillar in God's house, it means there mustn't be any division at all. And, and so we're looking at the book of Colossians chapter 1. Praise God, where Apostle Paul starts and Paul, a servant, he's a, as a servant, and praise God. And too much today inside of the world and inside of the church, it's become apostle and bishop and archbishop and, and pope or president, right? And, and they've stopped people, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, praise God. You, you're servants. You've got blinded now. Well, Jesus warned that. He said, Take it of the leaven of the Pharisees. That means the leaders. And accept your righteousness. So repeat that. Those of you who would seek to become great. You must become the servant of all. And so there you find in America now. As great as Trump was. And great as done, Trump has done great things for America. Praise God when he was last time president. And now you find the prostitutes going, is pulling him down. Why? Because people start to forget. And then what, what it means is that we're all servants. All of us are servants, praise be to God. That's how the kingdom of heaven is held together. And I thank God is, is around my life now. I've got servants, people that are really, what I mean by servants is people that are humble. That's what I mean, praise God. Everyone can raise up and be prideful. Gabriel's a very humble person, praise God. That, that's his strength. And God gave a promise, he said, I will exalt the humble. So if you want to be great, you, you know, America wants to be great. They, they've got to be humble. Have they forgotten what it means to be humble? Is the way Trump behaving humble? Is the way Black Lives Matter is behaving? Is that humble? Is the way that, 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 that the women's feminism behave? Is that humble? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I know Tammy and, and Len, the very humble people. That's their strength. That's how you become exalted, praise be to God. And, and that's how I, I look at that and say, I too must be humble, praise God. We must be brought to a place of humility that the nation would be great, huh? or the church would be great. And what's happened now, we, we cling on to our differences, Protestant, Catholic, you know, um, um, Republican, Democrat, conservative, Labour, and we rise up in pride. And we forget humility. God exalts the humble. It's God exalts. Praise be to God. So, and if you forget that, guess what happens? God's going to bring you down. Even if you're a great person. It doesn't matter even if you're great. Even if you've done great things for God. He, Ezekiah did great things for God. And yet he, he began to be prideful. God brought him down. Asa did great things for God. God made him die of diseased feet. Josiah said was one of the greatest kings that Israel ever had. Really loved God. And yet he became not humble before somebody that was nothing and he died. Praise God. So, so God is an executor against pridefulness as soon as it rises. That's what we don't realize. He's so against pride that even when the good man becomes prideful, God will slay you. He may slay you immediately. And people have forgotten that 
And that, that, that God's judging can be media. And they, what do they do? They're behaving prideful for a long time. And guess what God said in the prophet Hosea? They have they forgotten that I remember the, all the transgressions? God sees all the transgressions. Praise God. And sadly, that's why if you want to choose the world's way, amen, praise God. And that's what the world is about. Every time somebody goes wrong, Ima Khan is found taking steroids or uh, Ben is found taking steroids or Lance Armstrong found taking steroids. The pride of the press, look at the TPPs. The pride of the press rises and it becomes almost like a feast that they can feed on, like Jude said, spots in their feast. They're looking for something to feed on, something that can make their pride uh, exalt. Look at this, a pedophile may kill a child. And as so sad as that is, up comes the press, something like vultures that they can feed their pride on, where, where they now feel so righteous and holy that they can gossip about how bad the sportsman is, how bad Michael Jackson is, how bad Trump is, amen, feasting on a dead something instead of the nation going to God and crying. Amen. If it's a pedophile in the land, it's my fault. I've contributed to it. All of us have contributed to it. The only person who didn't is Jesus. But he died for the sins of the whole world. And if he died for the sins of the whole world, then the whole world must count themselves responsible. Praise God. You understand that? And that's humility. And that's humility must be the thing that keeps us together. That we're all humble. Humble ourselves one before the other. Praise God. And that's how Paul opens the book of Colossians. Paul a servant. Paul a servant. Praise God. Amen. And amen. And then Paul goes on in Colossians saying to the bishops and the pastors and the deacons, plural. What happens when there's humility? There's not just going to be one pastor in the church. There'll be lots of pastors. Because when you have a mind to serve, you'll be surprised the gift that's hidden inside of you. Praise God. But what happens in churches? We have one pastor or one bishop. Praise God. Amen. Why? Drawing the honor. See the pride? Feasting on the pride. Amen. Praise God. But when the house will become of servants, then what you'll find, praise God, is there'll be many people pastoring, and many people becoming deacons in the house of God. Meaning what? Sharing. They'll be sharing. Praise God. Amen. Take ye. This is my body which is broken for you. Take ye all of you and eat all of it. Praise God. Amen. And we're not able to eat all of it. Amen. Praise God. If there's not humbleness there. Amen. Where you find David was, Saul was coming to anoint the king. And the father kept away, hidden David out of the way. Praise God. That's what's happening in the world today. Peter said, disallowed by men, but not of God. Amen. They're keeping certain people out of the way. That people may get the glory. And that's what Paul said to the Colossians, to the bishops and the pastors. And what's the sign that Paul says, amen, that we become servants? Listen to what he says. Amen. Amen. Giving thanks continually and praying continually. Praise be to God. Amen. That's the faith of a servant. Amen. When you're truly there to serve God. And to serve the people around you. There's not enough time to gossip about what Trump has done wrong 20 years ago. Praise God. Amen. Amen. There's not enough time to... Gabriel. Gabriel. Praise God. There's not enough time to worry. Amen. Praise God about what Trump is doing. Amen. Or what this church is doing. Or what your brother's done you wrong. Amen. All you'll know is it's time for you to give God thanks continually. Mm. Praise God. Amen. I, I, and if there's a problem there with Trump, if there's a problem with your husband, if there's a problem with Pastor Jay, if there's a problem with the deacon, pray continually. And who sorts things out? God. Mm. You think God can't judge Trump? You think God can't judge Nebuchadnezzar? Well, God said to Nebuchadnezzar, you've got one year. There's the prophet. You've got one year. And see when you've got a church full of people that are praying continually and thanking God properly. When you've got wicked reigning, you've got one year left to repent. 
And then after that one year, boom, God dealt with him. Praise God. And, and that's what's missing from the church today. Apostle Paul said, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Is there not any wise man among you? Praise God. Goeth to, to the unjust for judgment. We don't need to, 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 to gossip and to, to do these things that the way the world does. Because when there's something wrong with your wife or your husband or your pastor, amen, give God thanks continually and go to God continually. Praise God. And what God will do is, David said, the whole earth is full of thy judgments. Praise God. Amen. And, and so when you've got people around you, and that's the beauty of the cross, whenever two or three are, around you, are gathered together, there I am. What does that mean? The two or three you've got around you, the two or three that will continually give God thanks. Gabriel, Ruth, Tammy, Len, amen, are continually thanking God. Amen. They're continually praying. Praise God. And inside of that, that's the people you want gathered around you. Praise God. And when you've got those people gathered around you, amen, then Paul in Colossians. Now remember we're talking about become a pillar. Praise God. Then you'll develop people. Paul said, amen, Colossians 1, that their hope will be in heavenly things. Praise God. Wow, look at that. Amen. What does that mean? Your hope is in heavenly things. Amen. Jesus said, store your treasure in heaven where moth or rust cannot break forth and steal. Praise God, which means this. Remember we said, amen, they overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. You're not hanging on to anything of this life. Yes, we give God thanks. Amen. I've got my wife, Lynn. Yes, I give God thanks for Lynn. Praise be to God. Amen. But if God chooses to kill her and to take her next week, amen. I am not going to give up my faith. It's not going to make me stop serving God. It's not going to stop me. And great men of God like Smith Wigglesworth. He was a great preacher when he was with his wife. Amen. But after his wife died, he went around the whole world preaching the gospel. Amen. He had his children with him still, never remarried, and became a mighty man of God. Praise God. Why? Because his hope was in heaven. Amen. It's not like Esau's blessing. You shall be blessed with the fat of the earth and the dew of heaven. Jacob's blessing. You shall be blessed with the dew of heaven and the fat of the earth. Amen. The earthly things come last. See first the kingdom of God. And all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Your hope is in heaven. And if your hope's not in heaven, the devil will see it. That's when it came to pass that the devil, amen, when the sons of God presented himself, the devil came amongst them. Why? Because the devil could smell, amen, that the hope of the sons of God, praise God, was not truly in heaven. Amen. Praise God. But when you're a servant, when God is developing you into a pillar, amen, in God's house, you know, praise God, amen, amen, praise God, that your hope is set. Apostle Paul said, set of your affections on things above. What a wonderful pleasure to enjoy your wife. What a wonderful pleasure to enjoy your wife. What a wonderful pleasure, praise God, amen, to enjoy food. You understand that? Mm -hmm. But you don't sell your birthright for these things. Praise God. And that's why it's a joy to be able to meet together today. Amen. In the presence of God. Amen. This, this amen, um, Easter week, Crucifixion Friday, Saturday, when Jesus was in purgatory, when it looked like, amen, all hope was lost. No, no, no. Praise God. Something great was about to happen. Amen. Jesus is about to be risen from the dead. And that's what it means to have your hope in heaven. You may lose your wife. You may lose your son. Amen. We praise God. You may lose whatever. Praise God. But something great's about to happen. Wow, look at that. And that's how you should feel, Gabriel. Now you're in that way, brother. But it's all glass doors now. <laughs> uh, nothing in the way. You're always going to have that feeling. Something great is about to happen. Isn't that great, isn't it? Look at Tammy's face. Look, look, look. It's fantastic what God's done for you, man. I'm telling you, man. It's an eternal thing. So when God, when God made Eve, yeah, 
But Adam, what a great thing he did. Yeah. What a great thing. What, 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 a, what, a, what a soul mistake. He was like a resurrection Sunday. You understand? You're never going to be alone. Look at God's compassion for man. Though it wasn't good that he's on his own. That we always now know, as you look at the face, you'll now know something great is going to happen. No matter where you are, you're always going to be walking roof in that resurrection. I'm coming out of my hole. I'm not hiding anymore. Why? Because I know something great is about to happen. Praise God. Amen. And that is when you become a pillar in God's house. That is when Paul said, then you will have real fruit in Colossians chapter 1. Praise God. Amen. What does real fruit mean? Jesus said that as the Father wishes that you would bear forth much fruit and that your fruit would remain. Amen. You can tell your fruit a real fruit because after you go through Amen, your crucifixion, after you go, you're battered upside down, amen, praise God, amen, your joy still remains, amen, praise God, you still got peace, praise God, even when you're going through difficult things in your life, praise God, and then that's what Jesus says, then you shall ask anything in my name, and you will receive it, praise God, why, because your fruit is real, and what a wonderful joy, Amen. Praise God to know that the resurrection of Christ is real. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because then, then the, the, the book of Job, the sufferings of Job, which is all of our sufferings, all of those sufferings are coming to us in these last days. Praise God. But for those of us who are now pillars, those of us now, amen, understood what it means to have real fruit. Praise God. Amen. What a joy to be able to fellowship with people that are real people. Amen. Praise God. And you can tell that Jesus is real because the people that you're with are real. Praise God. Amen. And that's when Apostle Paul, then in the rest of the chapter, praise God, begins to, amen, talk about Epaphroditus. Amen. Who Epaphroditus was a servant. Praise God, who, who, man, who was sick nigh unto death, amen, for the ministry's sake. And that's the kind of people that will, pillars that God will hold your house up. Your children need to be held up, but they can't be held up, praise God, lest we become pillars, amen, lest we become real, we have real fruit, amen, praise God. And that's the kind of people, Apostle Paul said, that the prophet Jesus was sick nigh unto death. Then lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow, God help Epaphroditus to, to, to um, become well. What a sad thing. And it is a really sad thing in life. When you've got real people around you that have got real fruit. Amen. And that's why Jesus said when his parents and brothers and sisters wanted to see Jesus, Jesus said, no, no. My mothers, my brothers and my sisters are those who are real people. Those who've got real fruit. Amen. Because, amen, when you've got real people around you, when they die, Gabriel was to die, now I'm going to have sorrow upon sorrow. Yes, I'll have hope. Because I'll know, amen, that we'll meet again. 100%. I know that, praise God. But still, I'll have sorrow upon sorrow because somebody that's real has been taken from me. And thanks be to God, the Ark of God family. Amen. We have our families, but they're not real. Yeah. It's not real. Praise God. But the Ark of God family, we have things, Jesus said, those who do my will shall abide forever. You're looking at your family that will be there forever. Praise God. Until something that is not real. Praise God. And so you have to understand, amen, what it means to become a pillar. And you've got to understand the families that God brings into your life and that you would choose the right family because if you choose the wrong, then you'll remove the pillar from your house, praise God. And then the Apostle Paul goes on the rest of Colossians to show you the proof, amen, of what it's like to have pillars in your house. You'll have all wisdom, all revelations, all joy, praise God, all peace, amen. God, you're going to be aware in your life, that God's going to give you everything. Amen. That's how I'm sure Gabriel will feel now. Praise God. Amen. That God is not going to withhold anything from you. Nothing. Amen. In fact, the whole thing is there for you. Praise God. Why? Because we've now understood 
value of what it means. We become pillars inside of God's house. And how is all that possible? Because of Jesus. Jesus has become the preeminence Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul then, then introduced them to how big Jesus was. Amen. Praise God. So why does Paul not do that at the beginning of Colossians? Amen. Paul begins to amen, draw our attention to how big that we should be inside. It's like um, Numbers chapter 13, verse 13 or 3. Um, and the Israelites said this. We cannot go into the promised land because we are like grasshoppers to them. Praise God. We in our own eyes are like grasshoppers and we in their eyes are like grasshoppers. Praise be to God. Amen. But thanks be to God. What Paul is showing us, trying to recognize the giants in each other. When you're surrounded by giants. You're not, we're not grasshoppers in the Ark of God family. Gabriel's not a grasshopper. He's a giant. He's a giant in humbleness. He's a giant in serving God. So is Tammy. So is Len. So is Ruth. There's no grasshoppers here. Amen. Amen. We have all wisdom, all understanding. Amen. When you begin to see how big you are. Amen. Ruth hiding in a hole. Begin to see how big she is. Like she's saying, it's like she's being born again. Amen. Why? Because God is beginning to show her what's inside of her. And it's not until we can really see the value, amen, of what we are inside of God. Can we truly begin to understand? Well, look at this. How glorious and mighty is Jesus. You can't look at Jesus through the eyes of a grasshopper. No. You understand that? Yeah. You've got to look at Jesus through the eyes of a giant. And that's what God has made us. What does it say in Genesis that God made us in his own image? Praise be to God. Amen. And when you're standing like a giant, Gabriel, now, when we're standing like giants, then we're able to see the enormity of how great God is. Apostle. And that's what Apostle Paul um, would, would do. He said, it's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. I can do all things through Christ, through strengthens me, praise God. And then you can see the preeminence of Christ. And we don't want, amen, anything else to have preeminence in our life, praise God, except Jesus. Otherwise, what happens is principalities, powers, and dominions will start to have authority in our life. And we don't want it, praise God. There's no reason why depression anymore, sickness, amen, cancers, any of these things, Huntington disease, praise God, Parkinson's disease, in the world, all these dominions and principalities and powers have got dominion in people's lives, diabetes. Mm. Why? Because they've not allowed God to show them the giant that God made them. Praise God, amen. And in return, see what Christ is inside of our life. Praise God, amen. Amen. And the Apostle Paul, amen, goes on to show us something wonderful. And this is all connected to really feeling like a pillar in God's house, being able to hold the house of God up, be able to hold your children's life up, be able to become your brother's keeper. Apostle Paul said this, that therefore you who are alienated by wicked um, works in your mind. Amen. Now we're not able to be alienated by the wicked things in our mind. Well, look at this. I feel so blessed. I feel so big. My God is so big. My God is so mighty. Praise God. Now when the wicked things come into my mind, amen, they don't have an effect on me. They don't alienate me from God. Amen. But what happens to people? David, amen, was lying upon the rooftop. Amen. And then a wicked thought came into his mind concerning Bathsheba. Amen. And it alienated him from God. David forgot how big he was. David forgot, amen, how he fought the giant and he defeated it. Mm. He forgot it because the, 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 the wickedness in his mind alienated him from God. But when you focus, praise God, amen, and how big God is inside of your life. Mm. Wicked thoughts, now the wicked thoughts will come, but they're now not able to alienate you from your relationship with God. And that's a wonderful thing. That's why the Bible said, we have peace with God. Amen. Praise God. Through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean to say that wicked thoughts, Gabriel, are not going to come in your mind. But what they're not able to do now, amen, is to alienate you from God. 
Praise God. Amen. And that's then Paul ends Colossians chapter 1. Amen. Where he focuses on. Therefore we rejoice in the sufferings of Jesus. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Amen. Inside of our life. Amen. And, and that's beyond the wisdom of this world. Amen. The way the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. How can you reach a time in your life when you start to actually rejoice in your sufferings? Normally what would happen before, when the sufferings come, they would what? Distract you from God. Yes? You got a toothache, it distracts you from God. You got a headache, it distracts you from God. You got a wicked thought in your mind, it distracts you from God. Yeah. And remember, part of becoming no, um, pillars in God's house is that all these things come. Yeah, they just make you rejoice. You begin to rejoice in the suffering of God. It's almost like you become, amen, God's madman. Like somebody that the Bible says, um, Jesus, you're beside yourself. Like you've gone mad. You become, you become a fool. Like you, they want to put you in the mental hospital because... You, what, what, what will happen to you when you become a pillar? You won't even know why you're rejoicing in the sufferings of God. Amen? You won't know why. You, it will just now become instinctive inside of you, praise be to God. And it's then we're able to go into the last days and to warn and to prepare the world, praise be to God, amen, for the impending judgment that's coming. And we're not able to do that and to relate all the way back to Jesus, first of a message, the first of a sermon he preached on the mount, when he sat, sat on the mountain, then all his disciples came to him. Amen. The disciples are not going to come to you until you're ready to rejoice in the sufferings of Christ. Amen. That means now you've forgotten about your own sufferings. And that's what's been such a joy about this week. This week has been the beginnings of the sufferings of Christ. Not the sufferings of Tammy or, or what I went through as a child, praise God, or, 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 or my husband's doing this to me, amen, or, or I've got a, a bill, electricity bill. Always our sufferings get in the way of the sufferings of Christ. The whole world is always talking about the sufferings of man. Yeah. They get people more about how they're suffering, how they're rejected. Amen. Black people are talking about, you know, black lives matter, they're suffering. Amen. The world's forgotten about the suffering of Christ. Amen. But when you become a pillar in God's house, when you become someone that's ready to warn people, amen, praise God, your life becomes about the suffering of Christ. And that's what this week's been about. Amen. From Palm Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 30 pieces of silver being grabbed by the soldiers, the dead coming out of the graves, talking, why is all that possible? Because we're beginning to rejoice in the sufferings of Christ. Mm. What's beginning to matter to us? Amen. This is terrible. What you're doing to me. Yeah. How could you do that to me? How terrible is that? There's the cry on the cross. Ah, but, but well, here's the next cry. It is finished. And now all you're interested in about is the sufferings of Jesus. How is Jesus feeling? What's he going through? What's he thinking about? What does he want done? How can we alienate his suffering? And his suffering is the condition of the world. God so loved the world that he sent his only son. Amen. That whosoever believed in should not perish. That's his suffering. It's not possible until you begin to rejoice in the sufferings of Christ. Why do we rejoice in the sufferings of Christ? Because no longer are you thinking about yourself. Come out of the whole roof. People dig a hole for themselves. Amen. Come now and begin to behold the sufferings of Christ. And when you begin to hold the sufferings of Christ, your headaches will go. Amen. Your Parkinson's will be healed. Your Down syndrome child will come back to health. Your hunting the disease that cripples your family will be removed. Because you'll be around people that are beginning to rejoice in the sufferings of Christ. Not just talk about it. Rejoice in the sufferings of Christ. Amen. That's what Apostle Paul said. But I now know the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But it's the power of God and the salvation 
those who believe. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And then we become pillars in God's house. Then we become pillars in parliament. Then we become pillars in our family home. Then we become pillars in school. And until the world, Psalm 22, go back to the cross. Come back to the cross. Forget about the prostitute suffering. Amen. Stormy Daniels. Forget about Trump's suffering. Forget about Black Lives Matter. And begin to focus on the sufferings of Christ. And when we do that, praise God. Then the world. We talk about Atlas holds the world up. Amen. No, no, no. Then you begin to hold the world up. You are the salt of the earth. We will hold the world up. Because we become pillars in God's house. Because it said, Psalm 22, then the whole world shall remember, amen, what happened 2,000 years yeah. ago. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise amen. Amen. So that's it for YouTube. God bless you. In Jesus' name.